Okay, chapter 5 of the book God Dictated to Me, entitled Isaiah 53, In the Day of the Lord. Just as he dictated the Torah, first five books of the Bible, to Moses, and a teaching from him to me, and me now to the Jewish people, so did all the prophets. He commanded and directed Isaiah to write Isaiah. Dictate it to him, as they say. All the prophets. And every one of them was a man in divine beings. They're all over the Hebrew Bible. I got news for you. Moses, certainly. David. Elijah, the Gentile. Okay. This is from that book. Every word of it is God's. A spirit entered into Ezekiel. Ezekiel 6, and this is from chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. And he, God, said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet that I may speak to you. As he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me upon my feet. And I heard what was being spoken to me. He doesn't hear God until the spirit enters. God is in his spirit, and basically he manipulates your mind to hear his voice. That's how he does it. This is God speaking to a man, O mortal, who is Ezekiel, but he does not hear God speaking until at the same moment a spirit enters him and sets him upon his feet. The well, spirit doesn't have any power. <laughs> He said, you know, like, there's your power, but it seemed like the Spirit was doing it. The Spirit of God entering a man and God speaking means the angel of God's presence, who is Spirit, alighted upon him, and that God is in him. Just as the Spirit of God alights upon and enters the Anointed One of Isaiah of chapter 11, verse 1. Moshe. Ezekiel says, what? yes, I'm a man of divine beings. For the Jewish people, once they've learned this teaching, that should not be a surprise, but they also should be excited about it. You know, the Christians go around saying uh, their main guy, their Messiah is God. Well, you can't do that, but you can say we know where God is. See that fellow over there? God's inside of him. And if you want to be in God's presence, go walk over near him. Any room I'm in, his presence will fill it along with the presence of the angel of his presence. The difference is, and I like this one. I think this is very explanatory. <clears throat> Those two together are the Shekinah. Okay? But uh, everybody in that room, say I'm giving a speech or something, everybody gathered the many, are going to be in God's presence. Okay? Generally, that means take off your shoes if you stand on holy ground. That's what he said through the captain and uh, through the uh, angel of the Lord in the burning bush. Uh, but no, you don't have to do that. He comes with a covenant of friendship. He, he's actually, he's generally in a good mood, except I'm in the fire refinement and I don't get to see it very often. I get it. <laughs> I get the backside of God more than I get the front side. But the backside, you know, he, he told Moses, I'm going to show you my backside. And he had to, he put Moses up in a high cliff and said, I'm going to put my hand before you because it's just too horrible to see. There's your Satan, people. That's what that is, what I call it. That's bad God. And, it, and nothing bothers him. He doesn't bother, it doesn't bother him to be bad. It bothers me to do wrong things. God says, if I'm doing it, it's not wrong. So you, you, you don't want to hear all of our talks. But uh, <laughs> you, you don't want anything to do with the backside of God. And he's a it's just like curse and blessing. The front of God, nice, friendly, merciful, kind. And uh, uh, backside, evil, mean. That's why I call him mean and evil sometimes. I, I'll say, mean and evil, let go of my neck. Of course, you know that. 
He knows what I'm going to say because he, anyway, that gets too complicated. Very complicated being three persons in, in one body. And particularly if you're the, you don't have absolute knowledge like everybody else in here. The Spirit says he does not have absolute knowledge like God, but he has the smarts of God. And he's keyed in some way to the presence of God, which is his mind, which is not spirit. Okay, Ezekiel says, The presence of the Lord ascended from the midst of the city, Jerusalem, and stood on the hill east of the city. This is showing God is one. And it is showing that his spirit is a person. And stood on the hill east of the city. A spirit, this is Ezekiel talking, carried me away and brought me in a vision by the Spirit of God to the exile community in Chaldea. Then the vision that I had seen left me. And I told the exiles all the things that the Lord had shown me. See, again, they get intertwined. The Spirit's the one taking him on the vision. God's standing on the hill. But he's telling the exiles the things God showed me. Believe me, it can get confusing. You ought to be inside of here with me. <laughs> the Spirit of God used the Spirit to bring Ezekiel in a vision to the exile community in Chaldea, and he tells the exiles all the things the Lord had shown him. And God stood by on the hill. For the Spirit of God to do this, he has to be a person. Now the power to take a man into a vision comes from God, who is nearby. Meaning the Spirit of God is the angel of God's presence. The Lord is a part of this vision, or was speaking through the Spirit of God, since Ezekiel told the exiles all the things the Lord had shown him. Micaiah, the prophet, tells of the vision he had where God was seated on his throne. But, Micaiah said, I call upon you to hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord seated upon his throne, with all the hosts of heaven standing in attendance to the right and to the left of him. The Lord asked, Who will entice Ahab so that he will march in fall at Ramoth Gilead. Then one said this and another said thus until a certain spirit guess who this is? A certain spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said I will entice him. <laughs> How? The Lord asked him and he replied I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Then God said, You will entice him, and you will prevail. Go out and do it. So the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours. This is Micaiah talking. For the Lord has decreed disaster upon you. That certain spirit is the person of the spirit of the holy God. He is in many of the stories of God. The power of God is present when the spirit enters all of Ahab's prophets and the words they speak change from what they intended to say to lies. And only power in heaven is God. Moses did not perform miracles in the Exodus. God did. Angel of death who, by the way, is also the angel of God's presence. God just renamed him for this story. He, well, he, the angel of death did not kill the firstborn of Egypt. I know that's what the story says. God did. And, of course, where God is killing people, firstborn, the angel of his presence is with him. The angel of his presence is great. It was a lot of fun. He's edgy like that. He just, he, we both think that's just funny. He's, he's too nice to... But I'm sure it didn't bother him. Nothing bothers these two. Nothing. 
it's certainly not my pain or discomfort. God, the only power in heaven is God. Okay, the angel of death did not kill the firstborn of Egypt. God did. The power of God is his and his alone. He does not share it or create it in others. His power comes from his will. Yeah, there's no angel with power. God thought creation, humanity, and the Hebrew Bible through from beginning to end. He imagined it in his mind visually, and then he spoke, willed it to be through a physical process. He does not have a magic wand and just speak something and it is. He did not say, let there be abundant water, and it was. No, he drew water in his power from the ends of the universe. There's H2O, if that's water, <laughs> H2O, in space, little particles. He drew it from the ends of the earth to dispense it upon the earth as oceans, rivers, and streams, all in his power. Then he added a script as though for a reality television show, a script of the story of the Jewish people and the day of the Lord, and he prepared it with the scripture. The Torah, the prophets, and the writings are his. He had them written by men and women at his command and direction, incorporating a little of the personalities of each writer into the stories. For example, the day of the Lord and the time for it is set up through the books of Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, and Malachi. With no indication they knew one another or even lived at the same time. This is his control and power in the world. He does not come to show miracles in the day of the Lord, though his righteous servant... Or through his righteous servant or otherwise. He does not change the natural era, <clears throat> order of the world or create new phenomena or change the minds of the people of the world to worship him or the Jewish people or to speak Hebrew uh, and convert to Judaism, all of which is part of Judaism's era of redemption, restoration, and exaltation. All things as are as he knew they would be. Working miracles is not necessary. That would take away from his having thought through with visual elements and absolute knowledge all things from beginning to end as not being perfect. And of course it was. As humanity would be without him and as humanity would be with him. Anytime an angel or spirit is present in a story and God speaks or his power is revealed, the angel or spirit is the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit. The person of God's spirit is his constant companion that he created, and the reason any man he comes to is a man of divine beings, a host of the Lord's hosts. He has many purposes as both angel and spirit in God's communication with the world in God's fire of refinement where he prepares his prophets for his purposes. Yeah, he's good to have around. God has you on the verge of tears or insanity, and the angel can make you laugh. He just can. Next chapter, uh, it's pretty lengthy. It's chapter 6, the angel of the Lord. It has to do with Zechariah and satisfying Rashi. He said, we can't figure this thing out. Until the teacher of righteousness comes. Well, he's here. God taught it to me, and here's the answer. Rashi.